Today you're gonna to learn an ultra flexible altar call progression that you can use to underscore moments of prayer or at the end of a message at church. Let me show you how. Hey everyone, I'm David from sundaysounds.com where we create resources to make it easy and fun for you to play worship keys. If you're a worship leader or worship musician, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Today we're gonna to be teaching you another altar call progression. Now we've done several videos in this series to help you have something prepared the next time you need to underscore your pastor, maybe at the end of the sermon or during a moment of prayer. And we think it's really important that you have a plan or at least some idea in your head of what you're gonna to take to those moments because you want to add to and not distract from what's happening on stage. Today, rather than teach you a couple of different parts that you can move between, I'm going to teach you a simple motif in the right hand and then show you how you can use the bass notes to follow along dynamically as your pastor is speaking. Let me start off by showing you the whole part and then we'll break it down for you. Let's take a look. All right, this is a really simple part, and let's start off by just talking about the sounds that I'm using that are helping me pull this off. I've got a go-to worship piano and pad combination. I'm using Sunday keys today, and this patch happens to have a little arp underneath, adding a little extra motion, a feeling of rhythm to the patch, and there's also a little bit of an ambient guitar swell effect when I'm playing notes in the right hand. But at the center of this sound is just the piano and pad. So this is gonna work universally, as long as you have that sort of sound going on inside of your keyboard. Now let me start off by teaching you this right hand motif and it, I'm sure that you've probably already got a pretty good idea of how it works because it's really repetitive, it's really simple. The reason that this is such a useful thing to have in your head is that you can really uh, easily riff off of it and create different variations as you go. So it starts off simple, you can always go back there, but you don't have to necessarily stay there the entire time. So all I'm doing in the right hand is just this. So in the key of C, that's just C, B, G, C. I'm just playing that over and over and that final low C lands on the downbeat on the one of each measure. So, and then there's the one right after. So one, two, three, four, one. And that bass or the chord change comes in right afterwards. So with that right hand motif, then you can play pretty much any bass note in the left hand that you'd like. And it's just gonna change the feel based on where that left hand is landing. So you could go back and forth between just the four and the one. So here's an F bass note. And then to the one, which is C. We could just go back and forth. We could hang out here as long as we needed to while the speaker was talking. If we change it up, adding an A minor, it gives a totally different feel of going somewhere different, maybe somewhere a little bit somber. You could hang there for a while and you could go right back to the one if you needed. And this is really simple. Maybe you're the worship leader and you have a keys player who's kind of maybe brand new to underscoring or playing underneath somebody. Maybe they're new to piano in general and you're in the key of C or in a, in a similar key like the key of G where there's not a lot of sharps or flats, this can be really accessible and attainable to even a novice keys player. But if you're a little bit more advanced, then you can do all sorts of things to make this a little bit more interesting and dynamic. So you have that main motif in the right hand, but you don't have to stay there all the time.
I'm still kind of coming back to that as my home base. And the, the other really cool thing about this is uh, if you're playing something that's really open-ended like this riff in the right hand, every single bass note in the scale is going to work and they're each gonna have a distinct feel. So here's the one. Down to the seven. You can go to the two in the right hand if you want. Down to the six. And again to the two while you're playing the five in the left hand. Down to the four. Keep walking down to the three. To the two. And then maybe we could resolve with a five. And then down to the one. So I love this type of thing, having it in my head, because I can really go anywhere that I need to go without having to change up much at all in the right hand. So the last example I'll show you is if we needed to go maybe dark or somber for a moment. Maybe we've been in sort of an uplifting place and then maybe whoever's doing the, the prayer is talking about people that are in a, in a darker place that need encouragement. Maybe they're going through a loss or a difficult time in their life and maybe the pastor's praying for people in that position. And as those people are being encouraged in the prayer, you can kind of go to that dark place musically with them. The right hand stays the exact same, but you just go up to that minor six bass note, to that A bass note. Right? And then you can just go back and forth between that and the four. So we're never landing home on the one. It feels like there's a little bit of a tension there. And we go to the two minor as well. Back to the minor six. We're still never landing home. And then whenever the prayer turns, and we need it to resolve, we can go back to the one. And we're able to do this without having to think a lot about it because that right hand part is so simple and so flexible. And this is really scalable based on your comfort level with improvisation. If you need to keep it simple, you can do so. You can just write out the chords that you're gonna change between and it's just bass notes in the left hand. Or you can leave it really open-ended if you're somebody that wants to more dynamically flow as your pastor is speaking or praying. So I hope that you'll take this progression, this idea of coming up with a right hand motif, and obviously this is a simple motif and there's tons of other ideas that are similar in their flexibility that you can use. Now the last thing I wanna do is show you this progression, this idea just in another key so you can hear how this translates across different keys. So let me play it for you in G. So once you have these relationships between the notes and you know where those bass notes are in the left hand, you can take this from the key I taught it to you in and move it any other key that you need and it's gonna have the same flexibility and the same sort of effect. Now, if this video was helpful to you, be sure to check out the other videos in the Altar Call Progression series. You'll find the links to all of those in the description of this video. Again, if you're a Worship Keys player, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because we're putting out new Worship Keys tutorials all the time. Lastly, be sure to leave a comment and let us know if you use this motif or this progression during an altar call at your church because we'd love to hear how it goes. Thanks for watching.